welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a Will I Bite video. You guys know I love Will I Bite videos. When my friends make them, I'm constantly commenting how much fun they are. Just because I love seeing people's opinion on new makeup launches. Sometimes people love stuff that I think is personally bogus and some people hate stuff that I am so, so excited for. So anyway, if you're interested in seeing what I think of some of the new makeup launches, just keep watching. Okay guys, so I like to keep new launches kind of saved on my phone. So the first thing I marked is of course the teaser to the Kat Von D 10 year anniversary collection launch. Now this is coming out on May 5th, I believe, for Cinco de Mayo. And I think that's really cool. Everyone's really freaking excited about this launch. I can already tell. I am a little bit skeptical because you guys, I'm just like one of those people where it's like, if something's getting that much hype, I'm like, ooh, is she gonna be able to deliver? Is she gonna crush it? Because everyone was really excited about the mini Metal Mats palette she came out with and I was like, oh, that was kind of a letdown. And like Saints and Sinners was like, okay. And the Divine palette, a lot of people really liked, but it wasn't really my makeup vibe, so I haven't really got a knockout hit from Kat Von D this year. I did really like those new shades she added to her liquid lipstick collection, but that's about it. So I'm excited, I'm excited, but uh, I'm I'm trying to contain myself because I know my friend Paulina, I was watching her Will I Buy video today and it was so cute. She's like, I'm not waiting for this Kat Von D launch to come to Sweden. I'm buying it from America and I don't care how much tax I have to pay, I'll stay up late and I'm gonna get this collection and I thought that was really sweet like she really really wants this stuff so hopefully she won't be let down I personally just know not to get my hopes up too much and like Kat Von D I like her brand I like what she stands for so we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes no. I can't remember if I talked about this already but I just want to mention the Urban Decay High by Shine Ultra Cushion Lip Glosses. These are out now and they retail for $20, which I think is like an insane price for lip glosses. <laughs> Gloss doesn't last very long, so you're reapplying them a ton, which is great because you're gonna go through it a lot more, but I don't know, I just, I don't really love lip glosses. I have a few in my collection and I have plenty, so I won't be buying any of them. But if you picked some up, I would be really curious to know your thoughts. Do you like the formula? I saw a ton of influencers got that collection, like the whole collection sent to them by Urban Decay. So yeah, they're doing really good with their PR because I've seen like really small Instagrammers and YouTubers get them too. So that's kind of cool that Urban Decay is doing that. And uh, yeah, hopefully someday, <laughs> hopefully someday, I'll get some PR too so I don't have to buy anything <laughs> anyways back to the video so another thing I saw and I don't know how new these are but I saw um, Bo, Bo Diction or whatever her name is on Instagram she had gotten these sent to her by Coastal Scents and I was a little bit intrigued so she showed the Jungle Roar palette and then I saw it on her Instagram and of course like I wanted it because I was like really Coastal Scents like I haven't wanted anything from Coastal Scents in years. I got the Reveal palettes in my BoxyCharm and I thought they were crap so I just like forgot about Coastal Scents but the colors look really promising and Lucia, uh, Lucia Temper something. I'm sorry I forgot her name but Lucia on YouTube she got this palette from Coastal Scents and so she's been doing like a I look every day with that palette and she's done a really good job with it so I don't know I've seen swatches of it and it wasn't very promising so I was like shit I wish I hadn't bought it but Lucia makes it look really good so I do remain hopefully optimistic and decided to keep that palette so hopefully I don't end up regretting it but you guys know I will have a review up as soon as I get to testing that. Melt Stack did come out it's called a baby girl by Melt Cosmetics and there are five shades in here. So I heard a lot of people were very disappointed when they revealed the shades because their teaser made it look like it was gonna look more like the radioactive stack, but then it was just like a peachy orangey stack. I think this is a good addition to Melt's like line because they didn't really have any stacks like this. But in general, if you have every other like warm eyeshadow palette in the world, you're probably not gonna be interested. I personally did used to own one of the Melt Stacks and I was not a fan. I think they're super expensive and I will never purchase another stack again. It is nice to see they're adding more but I just didn't think it was that great of a formula so I'm gonna pass on those <laughs> for future reference. Like I won't be buying anything from Melt unless 
it's something different or they come out with like maybe an eyeshadow palette I think that would be interesting I mean I get they're trying to do something different but I would like to see like a smaller eyeshadow palette from them as well just something more affordable so we can try their product Urban Decay is coming out with this Ulta exclusive I believe this is the Urban Decay Sin Afterglow 8 hour highlighter and blush palette for $39 now again I feel like this is one of those palettes where they're trying to do everything. They're trying to cater to light skin tones, dark skin tones. So like this shade Paranoid, like I don't know if that's supposed to be a highlighter for really dark skin. I just don't know who would buy this. Like either you'd have to be a really big fan of Urban Decay or you'd be buying it and only using like one or the other. Like if you had light skin, you probably can't use these last two shades, which a lot of people be like, oh, I can use it as eyeshadow. But really like who doesn't already have these shades? You know what I mean? So... I don't know, personally, I don't need any more highlighter, so I won't be picking up this Urban Decay one. I know some people really love their formula. I haven't really tried any of their powder highlights, I don't think. So I'm good. I'm good, honestly. Just meh. Uh, this, I feel like, was out, and nobody talked about this, but there is a new smaller palette from Sephora Pro. It's the Metallic palette. I actually bought the small one like this that was the Neons, and I actually returned that with the Swiftness. Because I did like a get ready with me video and I tried to use that palette and it was such a freaking hot mess. And I actually kept that part in the video where it was a hot mess. And yeah, it was just oh, it was so crumbly and the shadows were just making a mess. So I got rid of it and I will never buy another Sephora Pro palette. And I'm just very scared of this palette and I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. So let me know. Did you guys pick it up? It was a really good price. I think it was like 20 bucks, but me no interested. <laughs> the next thing we saw a sneak peek of is this Makeup Forever Glitzy Palette, which includes highlight, sculpt, and blush shades. Now, you guys, I have this like giant Makeup Forever palette that I am obsessed with. I picked it up during the Sephora VIB sale last year, and I love, love, love it. So I don't personally need this palette, but I think it is cool. I do like the Makeup Forever face products, the powder products if they are the same formula as the single pans that they released. So I think it's cool that they're coming out with a face palette. Again, I wish they had done different skin tones so, you know, they could cater to more people. But Okay, guys, so then we got a little sneak peek from Black Moon Cosmetics. Now, they just came out with that, like, half moon situation that everyone was bummed about. And this time it looks like they are doing highlighters. It is a brand I want to try out eventually, but, you know, they are a little bit higher priced as well. So eventually I will try them, but it's not something, like, I have to have right away. Let's talk about ColourPop and this collab they did with My Life as Ava. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about this palette and just kind of say, like, oh, it's boring neutrals. But you guys, I was thinking about this on my drive home from work today because I was watching another Will, Will I Buy It video and somebody was talking about it. And I was like, you know, these are the shades I would have, like, jumped for last year. Like, these neutral shades are, like, so up my alley, but... That's just not what I'm into anymore, but I think, like, if you're a neutral girl, you're gonna love these. And the packaging is gorgeous, and she is really, like, a beach babe kind of girl, so I get it. You know, it's not, you know, it's not what everyone wants, but I'm sure her fans and people that follow her are really, like, into her makeup vibes will really enjoy these palettes. I do wish, like, I'm really waiting for ColourPop to do, like, a fun Pops of Color palette. Like, I would love to see, like, a pastel or like a neon palette from them. I just I just think they can knock that out of the park. I want to see like lime greens and more yellows from them. So hopefully that's that's coming. But I love ColourPop eyeshadow formula, their pressed shadow formula. And I do like some of the shades they put out from their summer collection. I've been watching like swatch videos from that. And I kind of want to pick up like a few of the shades, but I'm like, no. One of my subscribers asked me if I would make a video of things I'm putting on my Poshmark. It's definitely something I could do, guys, but if you do get a chance, please do follow me on Poshmark. Right now, I actually went through my ColourPop Super Shop Shadow Collection, and I made little, like, packs like this where I put a few different shadows in one so you could buy a couple of them. And I've got those listed on my Poshmark. So if you're interested in shopping, my Su Super Shop Shadow Collection, it is on Poshmark right now. They just aren't shades I grab for all the time, and I just, I cut it in half, which I'm really proud of because my ColourPop shadows, the Super Shock shadows aren't getting enough love and so hopefully they'll find a new home. But yeah, I just, you know me, I love ColourPop so always playing on ColourPop's team. <laughs> 
Okay, next thing I am so pumped about is these Clinique Cheek Pops. Now, I've wanted a Clinique Cheek Pop for freaking ever. Lauren May Beauty loves these. She talks about these all the time, and I'm like, ah, oh, I really, really want to try the Cheek Pops, but I really want Colourpop, and I feel like I have Colourpop or like a similar shade, which is Red Vino from Milani. So I've just been putting off buying it. But now in this new launch, there is a shade called Poppy Pop. And this shade Poppy Pop just looks like right up my alley. So maybe I'll buy it. I'm not 100% sure yet. I really don't need any blushes right now. And blush isn't really like high on my list of like things to buy. So maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll watch reviews on it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. CoverGirl is coming out with these... Katie Cat palettes. I think there's a few different ones. I just saw this one picture on CoverGirl's Instagram and I saved it because I was like, oh great, here's 50 more shades of boring. And the thing with drugstore palettes is they aren't very pigmented. Like, I want to love drugstore eyeshadows, but I have not found any really, really good like drugstore eyeshadows. Like, ColourPop is drugstore price, but it's not considered a drugstore brand. So if you're looking for a small, like affordable eyeshadow color, I just go with ColourPop because how much is this? I can't even, I, it doesn't list the price, but it's like, unless you're a huge Katy Perry fan, maybe I can see you getting it. But like Katy Perry is so not my like cup of tea when it comes to like music that I'm really, really into that I'd go run out and buy anything that Katy Perry does. So yeah, I'm going to pass on that, guys. Now, this Luxie Beauty Collection, you guys, I am like salivating for this. Like all of my YouTube friends have like Luxie codes now. And so I'm like, ooh, like I should get this. I should support. It's stunning. But you guys, I haven't even tested like the Dollhouse Collection from Luxie yet. Like I have no opinion on Luxie's shadows yet. And I have some that I purchased pretty recently. Also, some of these shades remind me a lot of the Pat McGrath Mothership 4 palette, which I haven't reviewed for you guys yet either. So what I told myself is I need to review those items first before I can make any more Luxie purchases because, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's literally crazy how I'm hoarding these palettes. Sydney Grace is doing something really, really cool. So they are an indie brand as well. And here is kind of the description. I want to read it to it. It says, here are the two bundles next to each other so you can see the difference. The deeper bundle has two mattes that are deeper and doesn't have the two lighter transition shades. The two highlight and lid shades are different as the deeper has less white base than the light version. The lightest highlight is a duochrome that has a blue shift and the deeper highlight has more of a purple pink shift. This bundle is a little unique because there are two different bundles. The bundles share eight of the same shades that will work for all skin tones and the other four shades will be slightly different. Same tones but different intensities. One bundle will be for those that are fairer and want liner transitions and lid shades. The other is geared to those who have deeper skin tones or for those that would like more intense deeper shades. We're also planning on offering a third option that includes all the new shades for those that want all 16 new colors. I've never seen any mainstream brand do something like this and I must say like hats off to Sydney Grace for even considering doing something like this. Like this is an indie brand. They don't have to do this. You know, they can just roll something out and say like, we're a small brand. We can't, you know, afford to do like different skin tones and things like that. And they're doing it. And I hope they're successful because I think this is such a wonderful idea. And if you guys haven't picked anything up from Sydney Grace, their pigmentation is insane. I haven't used their winter bundle yet, but I did swatch it and it just swatched so well. I honestly remember thinking to myself, like I look at their swatches on Instagram and you can just tell they don't like doctor their swatches because they look very ordinary. Like this is in no way an insult to Sydney Grace. I just remember looking at their Instagram like, God, those swatches just don't look the best, you know? So I was a little bit nervous because a lot of people say really good things about them, but I'm like looking at their Instagram, I'm like, mm, like, okay, I mean, it looks good, but these shadows are so beautiful when you see them in person. So I think just try the brand. Like, I, I swear, I think it'll just blow you away because when I got their winter bundle, I was like, wow, these colors look so much better in person than they did in their Instagram photos, so I really think you guys will enjoy them. I don't know if I'm actually selling the brand to you right now, but I think it's so cool that they did that. To even consider doing something for lighter and deeper skin tone, I think it's just 
awesome. So good job, Sydney Grace. I hope that me featuring you in this video will drum you up some business because you guys freaking deserve it. I think that's beyond cool. The next brand I want to talk about is Beauty Bakery is coming out with a foundation called Cake Mix. Now this is a demi matte foundation and will include 30 shades coming soon. Very exciting. Of course their packaging is uber cute so we'll have to wait and see what it looks like. I'm pretty much trying not to buy foundations until I finish some up. I just have so many foundations right now so I probably won't be picking this up but I do think it's really really cool that they're coming out with a foundation. Sol de Janeiro is coming out with Ipanema Sunset Glow Oil and Copacabana Bronze Glow Oil and some bath bombs as well. Now if you guys know anything about me in the summertime girl I like to glow this tan skin of course like if I get some shorts on and I love to slather myself with something shimmery so I was really intrigued by these glow oils. Now bath bombs, I don't have a big enough bathtub child. Someday hopefully I'll have like a soaker tub but I don't so I don't really like to spend money on bath bombs because I don't feel like I get the full effect but uh, I have my eye on those glow oils. I did pick up like a body set from Sol de Janeiro because everyone and their grandma talks about their body products. And they are amazing. They do smell good. Now, I can't afford to keep, like, using their body wash and stuff, but very cool brand. If you have a little extra money and you want to treat yourself to some amazing bath products, I would 100% recommend. The next thing I want to talk about is the Ofra Free Spirit Eyeshadow Palette. It's an all-in-one palette, and it says it's $79. Includes a full-size highlighter in Beverly Hills, a mini Rodeo Drive highlighter, a bronzer in full-size, eight eyeshadows, two blushes, and one matte banana shade for brightening. Now, I feel like this palette would work so well for my skin tone, but then what about all the other skin tones that this may not work on? I feel like Ofra is almost shooting themselves in the foot by creating a palette like this because... You know, obviously everyone's going to be like, is this going to work for me? Like, and I'm not going to buy, like these eyeshadows are gorgeous, but I'm not going to buy a palette of this many items just for the eyeshadow shades. Now, I do see that you can pop these out, which is great. And you guys know I'm a fan of all-in-one palettes, but I just don't know, like, is this the best idea for Ofra when it comes to, like, a palette? And plus, it's 79 freaking dollars. That's so expensive. So maybe someday I'll be able to afford one of these palettes, but for right now I'm passing. I do love the shadows they chose. They just look very fun. Those six shades are kind of what I'm looking for in an eyeshadow palette from ColourPop. So if anybody from ColourPop is watching, just like those shades with some greens, like I would buy that ColourPop palette. So yeah. Also, both my puppies are in here right now. So if you hear any growling or yelping, it's because they're playing. So the next thing I want to talk about is this new collaboration that they announced between Neutrogena and Kerry Washington. Now, I am a huge Scandal fan. I love Olivia Pope, so I'm really excited to see what Kerry Washington comes out with. And it looks like it's going to be exclusively to Ulta as well. Neutrogena, in my mind, is one of those brands that are notoriously good at catering to lighter skin tones and not so much darker skin tones. So I feel like Kerry Washington is a perfect badass to collab with them and hopefully teach them a few things about girls with some melanin in their skin. So I am really, really excited about that collaboration and hopefully they do a good job with it. The next item I want to talk about is EOS is coming out with some new skincare stuff. It's called the Aqua Collection. There's a lip scrub, a hydration lip mask, and some lip glosses as well as a purifying clay mask. Now, I owned like one of their lip balms once and I wasn't a huge fan. I feel like I've heard quite a few disaster stories where people's lips like, I don't know what happened to them, but I've heard a lot where people's lips like basically fell off their face where with these products. So hopefully their skincare is a little bit better, but let me know, are you guys big fans of EOS lip balms? I personally am not, but maybe it works for you guys and if so, good for them, you know? Hopefully it's a good skincare line. Next is another collaboration between Casey Holmes and Palladio Beauty. Now, I've not really heard much about this brand, but Casey Holmes is quite a big YouTuber, so I think it'll bring them some good buzz, which is probably why they're collaborating with her. And I'm excited to see what they decide to come out with, so that'll be something interesting to keep our eyes out for. I feel like I already talked about this Kat Von D brow collection that she's coming out with. 
But I think it's so cool that she's catering to people with different hair colors. Not just the regular, like, shades of brown, but also some fun pops of color. For people that have, like, pink, green, blue, purple hair, I think that's so freaking cool. So how fun is that? I'm definitely interested to see how those products work out for different people. Becca is dropping, or has dropped, this gorgeous new highlighter called Chocolate Geode. I think this is so great. It's to cater for people with really dark skin tones. Now I think it's really great that they launched this highlighter. I do hope they come out with more in the future. Of course, like dark skin girls want more than one option too. So I really, really hope they go ahead and make a few more. I think if you're also really into shimmery bronzers, this could potentially work for somebody with my skin tone. I personally have a MAC bronzer that's very shimmery like this. I think it's called Sun Dipped or something like that. And I don't know, I, I use it as a bronzer, but it would probably be a really good like highlight for darker skin tone. So if you are interested in this Becca highlighter, I would even buy it in support of them just launching more products that are you know, darker skin tone friendly. I think that's really cool that we're kind of seeing a little bit of a change there. The next product I want to talk about is Jouer coming out with these high coverage creme foundations and like extension shades and it's a high coverage foundation but they're coming out with basically a total of 50 shades and I just think that's really, really cool. This foundation did catch my eye when it first launched and I wanted to pick it up but it's an online brand, so I was like, oh, I can't swatch it in person. And so I basically talked myself out of it because I don't need any more foundation. But I think it's really cool that by the end they'll have 50 total shades and you can buy online. Plus, Joy just has some really cool products. I do love their lip creams. Their highlighters are pretty cool. And I really like that all glitter eyeshadow palette they came out with called, was it Sun Dipped? I think I want to pick that up at some point, but... I've been waiting for a sale, but they have some cool products, so I'm really, really happy that they're extending their shade line with their foundation. Now, I am definitely going to pick this up. This is the BH Cosmetics BH The Weekend Festival eyeshadow palette, and there's 20 shades, and this is going to be an $18 eyeshadow palette. Now, BH Cosmetics is definitely something I dove into last year. I really enjoyed playing with the Zodiac palette as well as the It's My Rare collab palette that they came out with. And now that I'm dabbling with color, I'm really excited for this palette. It looks like they have some really fun matte shades. There's like a nice bright orange, there's this shade called Swag, and this one shade called Palooza. Looks like a beautiful light blue, so I really hope these are pigmented and buttery like the Zodiac palette. I'm really, really excited for this, and I love the price point. I am trying to spend a little bit less on makeup the next couple of months because we have a big expense we need to save up for. So yeah, this is kind of my price range these days. This is my budget. Like $18, I can manage. So it's the $125 palettes that I can't do anymore for a few more months. So very excited for that palette. Another brand that's extending their shade line is ColourPop coming out with more shades in their concealer, which I think is really cool. Some people have complaints saying they oxidize a lot, so they have a hard time with it. You know, you can mix these concealers if they're oxidizing on you. I also love that they're coming out with a white. I think that's something I would like to pick up. I like the concealer personally. It does work well for me. And I like the idea of having a white concealer, so in case something's too dark for me, I can mix it in, which I think is awesome. Plus, who doesn't love a super highlighted under eye? I know a lot of people do. So very, very excited for that. Stila is coming out with a new shade of their Glitter and Glow eyeshadow. It's called Coral Crush, and it's $24, and it's a sheer golden peach with green and pink sparkle. This shade looks really beautiful in the swatch. I would love to pick it up, but... I'm trying to not buy everything, plus I picked up all the shades of the Pixie Fairy Light Liquid Eyeshadow, so I'm going to pass on that. Anastasia Beverly Hills is sneak peeking a new glow kit called the Unicorn Dream Glow Kit. I have already heard people say they're over the unicorn thing, they're wishing Anastasia didn't do one that was unicorn themed, but the sneak peek has this like beautiful girl with like this awesome pink sheen. And it just looks so pretty. It's hard for me to say right now if I absolutely won't get it. I'm, I'm definitely very, very curious. Hopefully it doesn't look exactly like the Moon Child or the Aurora Glow Kit. It looks really cool in the sneak peek. So we'll see what we hear in the future. 
Now, the Zuri Cosmetics palette is the color palette of Africa, and my friend Angelica had mentioned them in her Will I Buy It video, so of course I had to head on over to their website and check it out. I was very, very curious to pick this palette up, but like I said, I am a little bit more of on a budget um, as far as makeup purchases go, so I'm going to have to admire it from a distance. It does look like a beautiful palette. Kind of reminds me of the Juvia's Place palette, and it does look like this brand is owned by Africans, which I think is really cool. It doesn't really say which country, but it's it's still really cool, and I love the shades, and there's this beautiful purple called Rina, I believe. Very, very cool, so... Maybe in the future I'll pick it up, but for now I'm going to have to pass on it. Uh, KKW X Mario collab. Now, I don't really talk about KKW Beauty on my YouTube channel, but I do love Makeup by Mario. He is an amazing makeup artist in my mind. And so I decided to make the exception for his collab with Kim K. Personally, pretty disappointed by what he created. I feel like this looks like the Kylie Golden Peach palette or whatever it's called. I mean... If you scramble this around, it looks exactly like that palette. I mean, just based off of pictures, I don't actually know if it looks exactly like that palette. But just like eyeballing it, it does look very similar. So hopefully this is like really pigmented and is going to do some kind of magic. Because otherwise I don't know like if it'll like hurt Mario's reputation. I mean, Kim is like... All the Kardashians, I mean, if they could bottle air and sell it to you, they would. So... It's like they're going to say everything is good as long as they're making a cut out of it. But Mario doesn't seem like that type of human. Like I feel like he definitely has a good reputation. He's not just like somebody that's going to endorse anything for the sake of endorsing it. So for his sake, I hope this palette is something extraordinary. I do feel like it's super weird that he included that like blue shade. I know it's like a pop of color, but that does not like scream Kim Kardashian to me at all. I'm very, very surprised. I did see a lot of comments online where people are like, I've never seen Kim Kardashian wear a blue like that. So yeah, I kind of have to agree. So hopefully it'll be good, but I'm uh, not expecting too many things. I might pick that up just to support Mario, but I don't know how much the palette is. So I can neither confirm nor deny that statement. The next item that we just got a sneak peek of is this new product by Fenty Beauty. It's called the Body Lava and it's bo a body luminizer in two different shades. Coming soon, it looks like there is a light shade and a dark shade. Like I said, you guys, I love anything glowy, oily, just gorgeous for the summertime. So I'm really, really excited to see how much those will be priced at. They look very similar to the ones by Sol de Janeiro, so it'll just probably come down to price for me. But I am very, very excited to see how those work out as well. Okay guys, that was definitely a long video. Let me know your thoughts on some of these new makeup launches. Are you planning on picking up any of these items? I would be super duper curious to hear your thoughts and opinions. And I will catch you guys on my next video. Just so you know, I do have a Will I Buy It playlist. So if you're interested in seeing some of my previous Will I Buy It videos, they will be linked at the end here on the end card. I love putting up videos that I filmed in the past on there so definitely check out some of my other videos and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys!